Half a day to you and the people of Guam. Today is July 13th, 2023. This public hearing will be conducted by myself, Senator William A. Parkinson, Chairman of the Committee on Fire, Agriculture, Power, and Energy Utilities, Public Transit, Unemployment Insurance, and, un and Universal Health Care. This hearing is called to order, and the time is now 4.02. For the record and to comply with the open government law, notice of this hearing was disseminated via email to all senators and local media outlets on Wednesday, July 5th, 2023. And the second notice was also shared to all senators and local media on July 11th, 2023. Notice of this hearing was also posted and available on the Guam legislature's website and the Government of Guam public notice portal. Individuals testifying shall be recognized by the chair before speaking, state your name for record keeping purposes. The committee will hear testimony and discussion on Bill Number 138-37, an act to authorize the Guam Fire Department to use funds from the E911 surcharge, surcharge fund balance for outstanding and required vendor payments for the next generation 911 system. Introduced by myself, William A. Parkinson, I would like to welcome my colleague, Senator Roy Kanata. Thank you for joining us today. We will now proceed with discussions on Bill Number 138-37, uh, and I will give my opening statement on this measure. The E91 system is a brand new system that we have here on the island, and um, there is still some outstanding vendor payments that need to be done, as far as I understand. And the money is there, and it's for this purpose. And all we need to do is give the Guam Fire Department the ability to access those funds and they will be able to pay for the maintenance contract on our brand new E911 system. E system. So uh, the money is there, it's available, seems like a relatively easy one for us to get done. And so uh, I look forward to your testimony. Uh, go ahead, sir, whenever you're ready. Turn on your mic, sir. Buenas and half a day, Senator Parkinson and Senator Kanata. Thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony on Bill 138-37. I am Assistant Fire Chief Joy Manabusan, and with me is Assistant Fire Chief Mike Mkanko. The Guam Fire Department is in support of Bill 138-37, which will authorize the Guam Fire Department to use funds from the E911 surcharge fund balance for outstanding and required vendor payments for the next generation 911 system or for any expenditures associated with the operations and maintenance of the system not to exceed the fund balance as of September 30, 2022. Public Law 36-8 appropriated funds in the amount of $3,880 $716,000 to the Guam Fire Department. These were funds that were restored back to the Enhanced 911 Emergency Reporting System Fund that were inappropriately taken from the fund by previous administrations and restored by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. GFD needed these funds to cover costs for the agreement between the Guam Fire Department and AT&T for the design, installation, operation, and maintenance of a next generation 911 system and integrated computer aided dispatch system. The contract agreement is for a total of three years with the following breakdown. The first year, deployment, design, installation, and operation at the cost of $2,982,147.30. Second year, maintenance operation of the system. $1,190,459.57. And for the third year, maintenance and operation of the system, $1,191,992.98, with a grand total of $5,364,599.85. Based on the above, the amount appropriated in Public Law 36-8 will cover the cost of the first year of the contract and partially for the second year of the contract, which we are in at the present time. We'll be needing an additional amount of $291,890.87 to cover costs for the remainder of the second year of the contract 
and $1,191,992.98 for a grand total of $1,483,885. That concludes our testimony and we are ready and available to answer any questions from you and Senator Kanata. All right, at this time, I'll be opening up the floor to my colleague, Senator Kanatsa, if you have any questions for these gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good evening, or yeah, good afternoon to uh, Mr. Nkenko and Mr. Manabusan, Chief. I just wanted to clarify something. The 911 system is um, obviously a priority of the government to operate and to ensure that our people are safe at all, at all times. But um, it's my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that this money um, is the 99 cents fund, like on our, our monthly billing for our cell phones, right? Is this where this money is collected from or no? I'll defer that question to Chief Okanko who will explain in detail. Okay, thank you. Assistant Fire Chief Mike Okanko. Yes, it is from the dollars that are being deducted from your phone bills. Um, is it tracking well enough for you guys to operate the system and maintain it? Or are we short funding? Well, as I had, we had mentioned in our budget hearing uh, that we will be uh, meeting or uh, getting, trying to meet with P Public Utility Commission, uh, PUC, to request for an increase in the funds because, or charges, because this was done back in, gosh, 1995, 1997, if I'm not mistaken, and it's only be one dollar. The additional dollar that we may be requesting would uh, help us provide for the maintenance of this, uh, the system, and also the, with the, with our plan to build a standalone 911 building. Because right now we're basically, we're just leasing buildings right now for 911. Awesome, thank you. Um, I also wanted to clarify that if 911 was still um, obviously, it's still under you guys' um, operation. If you guys were to have a separate facility for 911, um, granted that there is legislation to proffer such building or land, um, would they still be under you guys' wing, or would you offer that they are a separate entity entirely from GFD? Uh, I come again, sir. I didn't understand. Would 911 still be reporting to GFD if they were a separate entity, or would they? Because right now, if they were a standalone building. Right, would, would you separate them? Like they'd have their own? No, it would still be under the control of the one fire department. Okay. Um, what, do you know what the other territories and what other states do with the 911 facilities? Uh, well, the other 911 systems are uh, either fall in the fire department or the police department. So it, I, it goes to either, you know, one of the two agencies. Okay. Now, when I mentioned we need to go to PUC, the law that I created the funds, the $1 surcharge, uh, it was specific that PUC has the authority to increase the funds, uh, increase the charges. Uh, so that's why we would like to meet. We want to meet with PUC in regard and talk, you know, meet in regards to that. Okay. okay. I've certainly toured your facility and it's groundbreaking and it does look great and awesome. Um, but I understand that there are some um, gaps between it right now. We still haven't had GPD online with it. Is GPD operational with it or no? No, GPD, GPD is still within the 911 system. They, we, still, we still get calls for 911 system. However, we transfer the calls to their precincts or their uh, dispatching units, which is the way even the new system sets up. It just makes it a lot faster now and a lot more secure in transferring the calls. Okay. Um, one more question. Uh, if we if we take the the nine one if it was to be increased, would you need? Well, right now it's a, the PUC, right? The, yes, sir. The, they need to do it through the PUC. Yes, sir. Would would legislation help alleviate that issue, or? I'm not certain. We would have to check the legality behind it because uh, if we do go PUC, well, like I said, when it created the the surcharge it gave PUC the authority to, to increase the surcharge as, as needed. Yes, 
Okay, thank you for that information. I understand your question was yeah. whether we could bypass that and go directly to this, but we, we really need to check the legalities. I'm quite sure any bill of law, any law passed uh, or trumps the other, so. Okay, thank you. Well, I think we're certainly under the right oversight chair because he oversees utilities and the fire department. So I, I look forward to working with them possibly on that kind of um, materialization. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you guys for your hard work. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Senator Kanata. Uh, I myself, I don't really have any questions for you guys. We sort of went over a lot of this ground already when we had the public uh, oversight hearing a few weeks ago regarding this system. So uh, we will make sure to attach the testimony from that public oversight hearing as part of the committee report. Um, so with that, thank you gentlemen for your testimony. We appreciate you coming in. Um, in closing, you know, one of the big boogaboos on Guam is we've always had a problem with maintenance. And right now we are in a situation where the money is there, the money is for this purpose, and um, we can get this taken care of now with a brand new system. Let's not let that brand new system fall to disrepair as we are so often want to do here on Guam. And um, I'll do my best to uh, expedite this onto the next session as quickly as I can so you guys can stay on top of it. You guys have done a fantastic job, and uh, as Senator Kanata said, I look forward to work with him to help fill those gaps for you gentlemen as well. Uh, if there are no further questions or comments, this concludes our discussion on Bill Number 138-37 COR, the Committee on Fire, Agriculture, Power and Energy Utilities, Public Transit, Unemployment Insurance and Universal Health Care will continue to accept written testimony on today's hearing within 10 business days from today, which will be mailed to my office at 238 Archbishop Flores Street, Suite 905 of the DNA Building in Hagatia. You may also send your written testimony to my office via email, Senator Parkinson at guamlegislature.org. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you.